Okay, we're going to cover now section 4.4, which is balancing chemical equations. <clears throat> when a chemical reaction occurs, um, the mass of the reactants and products should stay the same throughout the reaction. In a closed system, if we can collect all of the reactants and products, we should find that the mass at the end is essentially equal to the mass at the beginning. Okay, So that comes into play when we deal with chemical equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at example 4.9. In your textbook. And in it, they talk about the reaction of propane. This is called propane C3H8. Reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. In this case, it's a gas. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to balance the equation. When we say balance, what we mean is, if you look at every element in the reaction, so there's carbon, there's hydrogen, and there's oxygen. Notice there's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on the reactant side, but there's also carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen on the product side. And as I said, the mass should remain the same from reacting to product side. So that means that the number of atoms has to maintain the uh, conservation. It's a conservation law for the number of atoms. So if I have three carbon atoms on the left side, I should have three carbon atoms on the right side. If I have eight, car eight hydrogens on the left side, I should have eight hydrogens on the right side. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a technique called inspection. And here's what you do. When you look at a reaction, identify the elements. So I'm just going to start on the left, carbon, then hydrogen, then oxygen. And I'm going to look at the subscript for the carbon. There's three. So that tells me we have three carbons on the left side. And if you look over here, there's only a C. If there's no number, that just means it's one. So there's only one carbon on the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the smaller number that's over here with what's called a coefficient. Let me write that word up here. Coefficient. A coefficient is a number that you put in front of the formula. It's a mathematical term, but we use it in chemistry as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, I want the number here on the right side to be the same as it is on the left side. So if I have three over here, we need three over here. So what I do is I put a three in front of the carbon. That's a coefficient. So not after, not as a subscript, but before as a coefficient. And that means we have three carbons now. Okay, so now the number of carbons are, at, are equal to each other. Okay, now I could have alternatively, I could have multiplied the C3H8 by one third, one third times three would give me one, and the carbons would be balanced as well. But generally what we do is we take the one that's smaller and multiply that by a whole number, two, three, four, or five, in order to make the carbons equal, okay? Now let's do the hydrogens. That's the second element that comes up. It looks like we have eight hydrogens here, right? See the eight there? We have eight. Over here, it looks like we have two. So the smaller number is on the right side, so we're going to multiply it by some number. Now, what do we multiply 2 by to get 8? What times 2 is equal to 8? Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So I'm going to multiply it by 4, and I'm going to put that 4 as a coefficient. That's called a coefficient. And now we have 8 hydrogens. Okay. Now let's do the oxygen. On the, on the left side, we only have two. On the right side, we've got more. We've got six here. Two times three is six. And we've got four times one there is four. So we have 10 oxygens. I'll put a little line through the zero. So we know that's not an O, but a zero. OK? So now this one is smaller. So what do we multiply it by five by, to get 10? What times two? is equal to the number we have over here, 10. Well, 
divide by both sides by two and you get 10 over two, that's five. So it looks like we gotta multiply it by five. So five, the coefficient to the subscript, five times two is 10. If there's nothing written in front of it, it's really a one. That's really what that means, it's just one. Um, in, including the subscripts, if there's just the symbol C, no number next to it, that just means there's one, right? So let's check our work. One times three, three carbons, three carbons, eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens, 10 oxygens, six and four, 10 oxygens. Looks like it's balanced. You got 10 oxygens on both sides. So there you go. There's your balanced equation, okay? So which element did I pick first? I picked the carbon. I could have done hydrogen first. Generally, if these equations have two reactants and two products, the one that's just an element all by itself, that's an element, O2, do this one last. Do the elements that are in the compounds first. Carbon is with hydrogen. Hydrogen is with carbon. Do those first and then do the element that's all by itself. Okay. Let me show you a second one. So I'm going to look at example 4.10. Okay, in this one, they tell you that you've got ammonium sulfate. I'm going to leave the states of matter out because the equation is kind of big. And so I, I don't have as much room. So there's your reactants. Ammonium sulfate and lead to nitrate. And that's going to be converted into ammonium nitrate. And then got that sulfate. Now with this one, because there's so many elements, it's useful to think of your polyatomic ions. So you can break out the list. NH4 plus is ammonium. SO4 two minus is sulfate. NO3 minus is nitrate. Okay, so those are polyatomics. And the reason I'm breaking those out is because when you have equations that have polyatomic ions in them, it's very useful to balance the polyatomic ions as units. So balance the number of SO4s, balance the number of NH4s, balance the number of NO3s. It can be easier to do it that way than breaking them up into individual elements. So let me start on the left side. I've got ammonium, there's two of them. So I need two ammoniums over here. So I'm going to put a two. Okay. Um, so there's two ammoniums there. Now you got one sulfate here. You got one sulfate there. That looks good. You've got one lead and one lead, two nitrates, two nitrates. And there you go. So by putting the two here, you balance both of those. So that's balancing equations. So try some of those. There's a bunch in the homework exercise. Do as many as you need till you feel confident.